So let's talk big picture before we jump into this week's work. This week we are looking at a new unit. It's called conditional statements. This is going to seem a little different than any math maybe that you've done in the past. I, I don't think it's that complicated, uh, but it is a little bit unique, maybe a little different than what you've seen before. When we're doing conditional statements, um, it's setting us up for our understanding of geometry. Geometry is different than other maths because it deals with proofs. The idea that we start with a certain uh, few base understandings and from there we try to build the entire curriculum of geometry off as few little assumptions as we can make. And then we try to logically prove everything we can do. So there's a lot more um, what people will call, uh, what students call like English, like this is an English class. There's a lot more statements dealing with math than in other courses. So this is getting you kind of an introduction to if-then statements, some logic, some reasoning. There are full classes in college that go over things like this. This is really just scratching the surface of what conditional statements are. Um, so I know it's a little bit different, but enjoy that it's a little bit easier than some of the other things instead of complaining that it's not exactly like what you thought geometry would be like. So let's jump in here to our first lesson on conditional statements. You might be asking, what is a conditional statement? And that's a great question. So let's find out. A conditional statement is a statement written in the form of if then. So let's write an example here of an if then statement. If you wreck your car, then your insurance will go up. Some of you might be taking driver's ed here soon or driving soon. So generally, if you wreck your car, uh, your insurance premiums do go up because you're deemed an unsafe driver. So um, one thing to notice here, you might say, well, what if somebody else wrecked my car? What about uh, what if I have accident forgiveness or, or you know, a whole host of things? Don't get too hung up on whether or not the statement is true. Focus more on um, the if and then parts. and. We're going to work on kind of swapping them and doing different things with them. So don't get too hung up if you can find some reasons why this isn't true. We're going to talk about that more in a different lesson. This is more what are conditional statements, what do we do with them. So let's move on from here. Um, a conditional statement has two pieces, the if part and the then part. The if part is called the hypothesis. So let's go ahead and take this. Um, let's do this. I think I can make this work. Um, so the if part is the hypothesis, so if you wreck your car would be the hypothesis of our original statement. The then part would be the conclusion. Then your insurance will go up. So if it's hypothesis, then it's conclusion. The hypothesis is a little different than maybe you think of hypothesis with science or something like that. Um, that's a reasonable thing to think. Uh, but in this case, we're going to use that word hypothesis as meaning the if part of the, of the statement. So what we're going to learn is three different ways we can kind of reorder this statement. The first way is called the converse. The converse happens when the if statement becomes the then statement and the then becomes the if statement. So let me show you what I mean. What we're going to do here is we're going to swap these two. Instead of saying if you wreck your car, then your insurance goes up, we'll say if your insurance goes up, Let's fix this, make it sound a little better. If your insurance goes up, then you wrecked your car. Notice how we took the if and the then statements. We keep the if and the then right where they're at. We take the statements that go along, the hypothesis and conclusion, and we swap them. If your insurance goes up, then you wrecked your car. Again, don't get too hung up on if that's true or not. Just focus on the switching part. Let's look at one more example here of converse. If you miss three practices, then you're off the team. What would our converse be? Well, our converse would be if you're off the team, then you missed three practices. Notice how we're just switching. So our key word that goes with converse is switch. We see converse, we want to think switch. An easy way to remember that is if you have converse shoes, you can switch them out for another pair of shoes. I don't know. Maybe that's a little silly. Maybe that's helpful. Maybe it's not. The second one after converse is inverse. With inverse, we want to negate the hypothesis and the conclusion. So again, let me show you an example here. Um, if you don't wreck your car, then your insurance won't go up. Notice 
with this, if you don't wreck your car, your insurance won't go up. Um, we've negated the, the hypothesis and conclusion. We haven't switched them, we've just taken the opposite. Negate means to take the opposite. Let's look at one more example here. If you miss three practices, then you're off the team. If you don't miss three practices, then you're not off the team. Notice how we've negated it. This should, or in this case, actually, let's talk about this. Instead of saying not off, what can we say instead? Well, you're on the team, right? So negating doesn't always mean a not. Sometimes it just means the opposite. Then you're on the team is the exact opposite of off. So um, do be on the lookout with that for your inverse. All right, the last one. If converse switches and inverse negates, we take kind of the opposite, contrapositive switches and negates, it takes the opposite. So both parts are negated and the order is switched. Once again, we'll use our wrecked car situation. So first thing we want to do is we want to um, switch these guys and then we're going to negate them. So um, if your insurance doesn't go up, then you didn't wreck your car. Notice how we've swapped the statements and we've negated it. Last example here, contrapositive. If you miss three practices, then you're off the team. We're gonna switch it and negate it. If you are on the team, then you did not miss three practices. Hopefully this is an, an easy, easy lesson for you guys. Uh, it's just a quick introduction to inverse, converse, contrapositive with conditional statements.